Now, the average tells you about an average kind of risk. The key number that you have to look at is one. One means you got equal odds. So the technical interpretation of a hazard ratio study is that if the confidence interval, that is, that interval in which you collect data such that the mean comes out with this number, if that crosses one, then you don't know anything. Basically, what you have here, looking at this data on saturated fat, which again has been demonized all these years, is it's like 50% chance of rain. You know what 50% chance of rain means? It means you know just what you knew before you turned on the TV set. In distinction, I, I know I'm getting it time. I have three more slides. Okay. I'll just do this very uh, quickly to show you. Uh, focus on this. This is a similar plot. It's turned sideways. It's the hazard ratio. All I want you to look at. This is hemoglobin A1C uh, on this axis. And this is, again, the hazard ratio for cardiovascular events, in this case, separated between microvascular uh, uh, <coughs> events or uh, death from uh, uh, peripheral disease or from myocardial infarction. What you need to look at is that these error bars never cross one. There's never an advantage to having high hemoglobin A1C. Uh, the lower the hemoglobin A1C, the better off you are. Okay, now, at the low end, not absolutely, but anything above uh, uh, six and a half, you, you definitely know that uh, uh, your risk is going up. The other thing that's, uh, this is the final point I wanted to make, and that is that what kind of thing are you studying when you uh, look at hazard ratios replacing one macronutrient with the other? What you're not doing is what you do in, in cigarette smoke. Cigarette smoke, you, uh, you clearly increase your risk uh, of uh, lung disease if you smoke cigarettes. But it's not guaranteed. Lots of people smoke and live to uh, a very old age and die from something else. Uh, so in that case, you're comparing susceptible with non-susceptible. But that's not what you're doing here. Here, you're comparing relative risk, which means that if you don't get better, you're going to get worse. If you replace saturated fat with carbohydrate, and you don't get better from that, you're going to get worse. Uh, basically, basically, you're gambling. You're in a blackjack game, and you're not going to get your chips back. So. Uh, Here's the bottom line. Saturated fat is a toss-up at best. Hemoglobin A1C is always beneficial. And you want to bet against a sure thing for something that's conjectural. So uh, again, this summarizes all of it. Uh, my case that carbohydrate restriction is the default diet. So today's lesson is carbohydrate restriction is established. There's no scientific controversy. Controversy is political. The government agencies, the editorial boards, they're all controlled by, or they listen to the life reports. So what you need to do is help us pursue policy and scientific practice. We need to, we need to uh, reach these uh, organizations. <laughs> And we need to get some press. We need, we need to find a way to get the press to pay attention to, uh, to interview us uh, rather than interview the latest uh, uh, experts on protecting animals. <coughs> and finally, uh, uh, we can get significant research done with private donations. Uh, this, your chances of getting funding from federal agencies are greatly diminished compared to almost any other field. Okay, that's it. So I have how many minutes for questions? Um, Minus four. Minus four. <laughs> you have to kind of 10 to 15.
Okay. I just wanted to ask you to clarify that second to last slide with all the four graphs, the five per five e percent increment. Help me understand that a little bit. Per five e percent. What yeah. So what they what they're saying is, you have a group of people. You compare the uh, uh, how often uh, a group. How many deaths in a, in a time period as a function of how much uh, saturated fat versus how much carbohydrates is in that diet? And then the computer converts it to every 5% that you change, this is your risk. So it, it's, uh, why don't they just show you the raw data? Well, they should show you. So E is a percent, E is an event? E is a... Oh, I'm sorry, E is energy. Or energy. Yeah, so if you, if you change 5% of the calories in your diet uh, with uh, uh, saturated fat, yeah. and, and that's, a, that's a big number because uh, the agencies are recommending 7%. So if you change by 5%, you should be able to see that if they're uh, talking about 7% uh, versus... And do you think that holds linearly through the range of changes? I mean, if you went from 5% to 10%, Probably be more dramatic, but that's not what they're really Yeah, I, I, you know, this is. You can't speak to that. Yeah, because, this is so yeah. highly processed data. But, you know, the, the other thing is about the whole idea of a meta analysis. Some of these data were collected 20 years ago. Why didn't we wake up then? You know? Now, I mean, my take on this if you get an uh, experiment that shows you there's no effect of a saturated fat reduction, and that one that shows you that there is an effect, to say that the net effect is the average of these two, it's uh, the example that I always uh, uh, give is the uh, emerging country that has to decide, it's laying down a new railroad, and has to decide on the gauge of the railroad, should it match the gauge of the country to the north, or the gauge of the country to the south, which is different. So the parliament decides they'll take the average of the two gauges. Uh, it doesn't tell you anything. Yeah. Uh, so if you have data showing there's an effect, and you have showing data that there isn't an effect, you, the, the uh, prima facie conclusion is you can't make a decision. Now the problem with saturated fat, uh, uh, because of the uh, legal overtones that Laurie set up here is saturated fat is being found not guilty. Now the problem is that it, it, in evidence-based medicine, it really is like evidence in a court or a decision in a court. You can't be found innocent. Okay. You can only be found not guilty. Now uh, the problem in my view with saturated fat is it should never have been indicted. My perception of where the future is, is that saturated fat is like a child molester. If he's found not guilty, you still won't let him move into your neighborhood. So, yeah. um, How much more research is necessary? You mentioned that to, to fund research. How much more research is, is, is needed in this area? Well, uh, what we know is, uh, is much less than what we don't know. In terms of the major conclusion uh, that carbohydrate uh, reduction is uh, the uh, default diet, I don't think there's, you know, that, that's pretty strong. But remember, we don't...